Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today on For His Glory Lifestyle. Today is February 24th, 2022. And I wanted to do this uh, episode or focus, use this episode to focus on what's going on around the world politically um, as well as socially, but to ensure that everyone who calls themselves a Christian, who belongs to God's kingdom, understand that we have a mandate from God where we are to pray that his will is done here in the earth realm. And not simply just pray, but do everything that we possibly can to number one, make sure we know what his will is and proclaim that will as well as execute that will here in the earth realm. Everyone knows that today Russia invaded the Ukraine. Now there are different news sources that are sharing that Putin, the minister, prime minister, president, the ultimate ruler of Russia, has said that he's um, has engaged in military operations. But when you look at what is happening in the Ukraine at this point in time, there are areas to the north, south, east, and west of the nation that Russia has sent in missiles. And those areas have the power stations for the country. So clearly, this is a declaration of war. I don't know why people are not saying that's what it is, because anytime a country encroaches on another country who is sovereign, meaning they have the right to self-rule um, because the government has been set up to and has been established to rule the people, then that is a sovereign nation. However, because of the, I will say it as what it is, the demonic, demonic activity that has been going on in the world, I would say for the, over the past decade, things have come to a head, not just in Russia and with their issues or their invasion of the Ukraine. I am talking about what's happening here in the United States, what's happening also in Canada and other countries around the world. So I'm going to talk about the United States, Canada, and Russia along with Ukraine. Um, let's make sure we're also clear on a number of things. There are Christians who believe that uh, God is against war. They tend to uh, say the first commandment, or rather one of the commandments, the first commandment is you need to love the Lord or you are to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. But the commandment associated with thou shall not kill, and I'm, I'm just going to read some notes here just to make sure that I don't leave anything out and for you all to be able to go to your own Bible to read these scriptures, right? But many people, again, mistake that reading the by reading the Bible, Exodus 20, 13, you shall not kill then a seek to apply that to what it means to go to war, not go to war. However, the Hebrew word literally means the intentional premeditated killing of another person with malice slash murder. God often ordered the Israelites, right, to go to war with other nations. That's in 1 Samuel 15 and 3, Joshua 4, 13. God ordered the death penalty for numerous crimes. And that's in exec Exodus. And I'm again reading this and you can go and read in your Bible for yourself. Exodus 21, 12 and 15, 22, 19, Leviticus 20 and 11. And for everybody who's saying, oh, that's the Old Testament, don't, don't, don't worry, we'll get to it. So God is not against killing in all circumstances, right? But only murder. War is never a good thing. It is never a good thing, but sometimes it is necessary thing in order for the world, because of the world is filled with sinful people, right? Romans 3, 10 through 18, war is in, inevitable. Sometimes the only way to keep sinful people from doing great harm to the innocent is by stopping those who are coming in and attempting to not only take land, take property, uh, take anything that does not belong to them, but they uh, think it's okay to kill people in the process. At this point in time, um, at, at 5.46 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there are reports out of the Ukraine that there have been 40 um, people killed and 10 of the uh, and 10 people, 40 people in the military, and 10 people who are civilians who lives have been taken due to the military strikes um, by Russia. In the Old Testament, God ordered the Israelites to take vengeance on the Midianites 
for the Israelites. That's in num Numbers 31 and 2 in Deuteronomy 20, 16 through 17. He declares, however, in the cities of the nations of the Lord, your God is giving you an inheritance. Do not leave alive anything that breathes. Completely destroy them as the Lord your God has commanded you. Also, 1 Samuel 15, 18 says, go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Am Amalekites, make war on them until you have wiped them out. Obviously, God is not against all wars. Jesus is always in perfect agreement with the Father, John 10, 30. So we cannot argue that war was only God's will. In the Old Testament, God does not change, Malachi 3 and 6 and James 1, 17. Before I continue with this, um, Jesus in the second coming will says exceedingly violent in Revelations 19, 11 through 21 describes the ultimate war with Christ, um, the conquering a commander who judges and makes war with justice. This is verse 11. It says it's going to be bloody verse 13 in glory and, go and gory, sorry, and gory. And it says the birds will eat the flesh of those who oppose him, verses 17 to 18. He has no compassion upon his enemies whom he will conquer completely and co-sign to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. That's verse 20. What is all of these verses saying, right? Okay, so number one, it is clear that God is against murder. Thou shall not kill right? Thou shall not murder, go in and, and killing people. However, when you have nation states or armies of people going in to kill innocent people, then you have the right to protect yourself by making sure that number one, you don't cower from missiles. You have to take out the missiles that are being shot and the individuals who are actually shooting those missiles. So war is a terrible thing, absolutely. But some wars are more just than others, but war is always the result of sin. That's Romans 8, 3, 10, and 18. At the same time, Ecclesiastes 3 and 8 declares, there is a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. In the world filled with sin, hatred, and evil, and that's Romans 3, 10 through 18, war is inevitable, right? But Christians should not desire war. But neither are Christians opposed to the government of God in place and authority over them, which is in Romans 13, 1 through 4, and 1 Peter 2 through 17. The most important thing we can do in a time of war is, number one, pray for godly wisdom for our leaders, praying for the safety of our military, pray for quick resolutions to conflict, and praying for a minimum of casualties among civilians in both sides. And this is Philippians 4, 6 through 7. What is What am I saying here? Yes, God is love. God is just. And God desires that none should perish, but everyone to come to the knowledge of Jesus, Jesus Christ. But in times that we are in right now, we have a president in the United States who believes that it is okay to kill babies. It believes it okay to have people who believe that they're men when they're really women and women who they're, but they're really men, that they have a right to mutilate their bodies without telling their parents, and this is associated with laws or signature, um, laws and, and, and um, policies that are being put in place to deny the fundamentals of what it means to say you're a Christian or to believe in God. And then we have to our North Canada, where you have the prime minister who is doing everything that goes against democracy, which is the right to freedom of speech and the freedom of protest. But yet there are bank accounts being frozen by individuals who are doing what their charter says that they have a right to do, which is to protest. People, this is beyond just people in power in the presidency and prime minister seats and dictators in our, our in, in Russia. This has to do with a spiritual war that has been forming for decades, if not centuries. And we're now seeing it play out in so many ways. 
We cannot continue to say that we as Christians want to just bunker down and hunker down. And I'll be the first to tell you, when I first came back to the United States, I was telling people, all I want to do is have a cabin up in the mountain somewhere and, you know, drive 15 minutes to go to the nearest store to get, you know, groceries and then come back to my cabin and, and hide away. I truly understand what monks and nuns go through in the sense of they just want to be away from the world and just read their scriptures and, and love on God. But unfortunately, that's not what God has called us to do. He has called us to go into all of the world and proclaim his goodness. And what is his goodness? That you can bow your knee to the righteous one, the one who is good. So your focus isn't on the things of this world, meaning having the things in this world, but your focus is on proclaiming that God has a kingdom that will reign for eternity. And you can decide whether or not you're going to be in his kingdom for eternity with him or be in hell. Most people are not thinking about that. Even people who are in churches, they're praying for their finances, praying for their safety, praying for their resources, praying for their own family. But if you have Jesus Christ living in your mortal body, the resurrected one who resurrected you, then your desire is to see every single person you meet, that soul, that person know that Jesus Christ is alive and they can submit to his rulership. But if they do not submit to their, his rulership, then they will be their own God de determining what's good for not just their own household, but for their block, for their city, for their county, their city, their state, and ultimately their country. And we see what happens when you have people who do deny, they may say, Lord, because I just heard Biden say, you know, what in the Lord's name? Well, whose Lord is he referring to? Because the Lord that I know is against killing babies. It's against the community that denies that women are women and men are men. I'm talking to people here in the United States who say that we're a Christian nation, but we're not a Christian nation. There are people in other nations in Asia, in parts of Africa, in the Middle East, where they've asked me, why do the Americans keep saying that you're a, a Christian country? And then I explained the foundation of our country when we read the constitution is that of the Bible. they are biblical principles that make up the United States constitution where it says we have the right to life, the right to liberty, right? The right to pursue happiness. But when you have people in power who say that you do not have an inalienable right, an inalienable inalienable, a right that cannot be taken away, nor a right that can be given away to life, then you have a problem. You are now, you are now sowing seeds for destruction of your nation. And we are seeing it day in and day out. When you look at the crime that is happening in specifically New York City, because I am from New York, I'll always say that I was from, I'm from New York because I was born and raised in New York City. But when you see the blatant killing of people walking down the street, the, the, the slapping of little children walking down the street, I said to a friend when I came back to the United States, I said, it's looking, it's as if I'm looking at people who are, excuse me, I'm looking at demons with skin wrapped around them. I'm not looking at demonized people. I said it verbatim. I'm looking at demons with skin. was at the Global Prophetic Summit in Dallas, Texas in November, where it's an invite only, you know, they invite all of the well-known, at least, global prophets, the Australian Prophetic Council, the Canadians, the Europeans, I mean, they're all there, and they're not American, thank God. 
Now, every single global prophetic council said to us, when we flew in over America, there was a realm of demonic warfare and religion over your nation greater than we've ever experienced in 50 to 60 years. And they looked at me and they're like, okay, wait a minute. What are you talking about? I said, the level of evil that I see and not only just see, feel in this nation. And when I talk to other pastors or Christians and ministers, and they're like, you know, the country, we just need to pray more. No, we need to go out into the streets and tell people that they need to repent. They need to repent for not proclaiming that Jesus Christ came to set who? Captives free. And if you do not accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, meaning being convicted by the Holy Spirit, knowing that you're wicked and evil, not just a bad person who does bad things now and then, God calls you darkness. God says you are wicked and evil. But we just say, oh, they're not, they're just not good people. They just have mental issues. Those mental issues is that you've given yourself over to the devil and now you're doing doing the devil's bidding and the people who selected this president, who elected the president that we currently have and any president that says it's okay to kill babies, that it's okay for a human being who has breast and a vagina to cut off their breast and go close up their vagina and uterus to say that they are a man. They are of the devil and people need to say this. But you have people who are in church buildings who are not saved. They are not Christians. And they say, oh, you know, oh, but God loves everyone, Beverly. Yes, God loves everyone. But you will indeed spend eternity in hell if you do not repent and submit to the conviction of the Holy Spirit and are born again and live for Jesus Christ and him alone. I don't understand why people are shocked by what's happening, not just in the United States or Russia or Ukraine or Canada or South America or whatever is happening in China. When you read the scriptures, it says the days will grow darker. And why are the days growing darker? It's not because people are leaving the church. It's not because people are leaving Christ. It's because people who once proclaimed that they were Christian, they were self-proclaiming Christians, realized that they loved themselves more than they loved God. They loved the things that they had and have more than they love God, which means they never were born again because once you are born again, you cannot be unborn. You cannot be unborn. Hear me. You cannot be unborn. And then I've heard people say, well, you know, the, um, um, Satan was before God and Satan said, I'm going to exalt myself above the, above the clouds, but above the throne. Well, Satan was not made in the image of God. Satan is a created being that will indeed have eternal hell, be in, in hell for eternity. But you, the person that is listening to this, if you've gotten this far, you are made in the image of God. And unless you have bowed your knee to Jesus Christ, you are an agent of Satan. There's only two sides. You're either on God's side because you're in him or you're on Satan's side because you're not in God. That is it. There is no in between. There is no, oh, I go to church and, oh, I'm a good person. Yes, you're on Satan's side in a building with crosses on it. And I am sorry for everyone who's sitting in a church where everyone is trying to convince you to love God and convince you to live for God and convince you about how good God is. If someone has to convince you about how good God is, you never receive Jesus Christ. You never received him. In John 1, what it talks about believing and receiving him, you can believe what your mother, your father, your grandmother or grandfather said, but you never believed in the one that they were talking about. And that is why your life looks the way it looks now. You don't think you need to share the gospel, not your testimony, not what God did for you. The gospel of the kingdom, which says that Jesus Christ, the son of God, God himself who wrapped himself in flesh came to the earth and 
was beaten and was crucified. And by the way, it said that God, it was ple pleased God to crucify him. Why? So that he can take the sins and the wrath that is from God, that is allocated to those in sin. He took the wrath of God, but he also defeated sin for us, for those who he now lives in. So for you to say, oh, I, I need to be encouraged. I need to know that God is good. I need to know that God is for me. I'm sorry, you never met him. You are not a Christian. You are not born of God. Because if you're born of him, no one has to convince you about how good he is. He doesn't have to show you how good he is. The fact that he saved you, the fact that you have revelation knowledge that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. And when I say die on the cross to my Catholic people, Jesus Christ is not on the cross. He's seated at the right hand of the father forever making intercession for those who are his. So that whole thinking of Jesus on the cross, still on the cross, staying on the cross, that is not the gospel of the kingdom of God because Jesus Christ is now seated in heavenly places. And we, according to Ephesians, are seated with him in heavenly places. So whatever is going on here in this earth realm, it is passing away, people. And the only reason why those of you who are indeed born again are still here in this earth realm is to tell other people that the God that they're serving, which is the devil, represented by who? Themselves, because they are their own gods. Everything they do is about them, how they look, how they feel, how they, they want more money, what more power, what more position. Everything is about you. I want to feel good. I want to look good. I want to have people look at me and think I am good. But there is nothing good in any human vessel except the one and only Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Savior, the Christ, the anointed one. Guys, we need to, yes, absolutely pray for Ukraine. And that's what made me stop what I was doing and get on here because I keep seeing all these posts about praying for Ukraine, but what about praying for Russia? I was on earlier today with friends in Russia and they're saying they don't want this. The people in Russia do not want this. There are people protesting in Russia saying that they don't want to this. And the people in Russia who are protesting are being arrested by the Russian government, guys. You need to pray for Vladimir Putin. You need to pray for, my, for Biden. You need to pray for Trudeau, Lacan, all the presidents. You need to pray for the presidents and prime ministers and the leaders of the nations of the world. But even more so, you need to pray for the people who keep putting these people who, where you can have elections in power. Because people keep thinking that they can dictate and determine what's good in this world. But that's where the problem comes in. You think you're good enough to dictate who's good enough to rule a country. I'm telling you people, specifically those who are in church buildings with crosses on them, you need to ask yourself, when you voted the past election here in the United States, did you put someone in power that Every single thing they say is antithetical to what scripture says. I know people say, oh, you can't call Democrats. You can't, can't say Democrats are not Christians. I'm telling you right now, if you signed off on policies by voting people in, maybe the presidency, city council, board of education, any seat that represents a group of people and you call yourself a Christian, and they believe in things that are antithetical to what God says, you need to stop calling yourself a Christian. I've said it. You need to stop doing that. Am I telling you not to vote? Am I telling you to, oh, okay, you have to vote for the, the lesser evil? No, what I'm saying to you is look at policy. Read the policies that they have backed. Read what they said, not news clips, not CNN or Fox News or ABC, read their policies and then ask yourself what I am doing, who I'm voting for, do they represent God? 
Because at the end of the day, what we're seeing in governments around the world, especially in what we consider democratic governments, you put these people in power. You made these decisions. And now when you look at what's happening in the United States with the crime in the United States, with the open borders, with the, the, the hideous things that are going on, you have to ask yourself, what role did you play? And the only way that anything is going to change, the Bible says, if my people, God says, if my people, number one, you have to be his people. If you repent and turn from your wicked ways, then he will hear you. God hears repentance. He hears prayers of repentance if you're not his. But if you're not his and you're praying, I don't know who you're praying to because he hears the prayers of repentance. For those who are standing strong, who refuse to deny that God is love, yes, God is also wrath, but refuse to deny that Jesus Christ is Lord, know that there are people praying for you, not just here in the United States, but around the world, in China, in Iran, in different parts of Asia, Cambodia, Laos, Philippines. They're praying for the United States. They're praying for leadership. They're praying that the spirit of this age of darkness and wickedness will break off those who are in leadership so they can indeed proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord so there can be rules and regulations and laws and nations that govern, govern people that gives rights that God has given people to live in a state where there is peace. Everyone, please continue to pray. Please continue to fast and pray. And first and foremost, fast, pray, but also speak truth. If it's of God, say it's of God. If it's not of God, then you need to say it's not of God. And make sure that those who are proclaiming things that are not of God, that is not of Yahweh, of the Bible, you need to then proclaim to them that they need to repent and give their life to Jesus Christ, surrender to Jesus Christ. So then what they have signed on to or signed off on as it relates to the destruction of the moral values in their country, they can then do the opposite by voting people into office who have the, the moral standards, that of Jesus Christ. Everyone, thank you for your time. If you've gotten this far, thank you again for your time. Thank you for your prayers. And may God be King of kings and Lord of lords in your own life. Bye.